Resident Evil takes shooting mutated zombies and monsters abroad with Resident Evil Revelations. Zombies, a cruise ship, terrible voice work with terrible puns and one-liners, over-the-top boss fights, and over-sexualization of the female characters with frustrating controls. Yep, this is a Resident Evil game, alright. It was designed to bring back the content and horror on what the franchise was founded on with that new style of more action-oriented gameplay, and I gotta say, they mesh very, very well. Older RE games were very focused on survival horror, where RE now has transformed into more of a shoot 'em up. And both ways to play this game aren't bad, but this game here kind of meets fans in the middle. If you ask where I stand, well, to answer that, I really like this game. I'm a fan of the old RE games to the new, and I really enjoy both ways to play this game. So this is kind of the best of both worlds. Except Resident Evil 6. I, at this point, just pretend this game never happened. Anyway. Developed and published by Capcom, it was released on the Nintendo 3DS on February 7th of 2012 in North America. On May 21st, it got a release on the PC, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and the Wii U. What you're watching here is the Wii U version. After spending time with this game, I definitely feel the 3DS may in fact be the best console to play this game, as it seems to have its design in mind, and with how the game looks and plays. The Wii U, I think, is the second best option as the Wii U still get the touch screen like you would on the 3DS, but from a graphical standpoint, I think this would look better on a small screen, as crazy as it sounds. So what makes Resident Evil Revelations a great entry into the franchise? Let's take a look. Yeah, this one's a little confusing, but basically it fits in the timeline between Resident Evil 4 and 5. Veltro, a terrorist organization, launched an attack on a floating city named Terra Grigia in which the entire city had to be destroyed as B.O.W.s or bio-organic weapons were set loose on the city and it was the pretty much only way to confine the infection. Cut to sometime later and Jill Valentine and her partner Parker on the search for Chris Redfield and his partner Jessica, as they all now work for the BSAA or the Bioterrorism Security Assessment Alliance, which was founded after the events of the Terra Grigia as a counter-terrorism group. Jill and partner track Chris and Jessica to a cruise ship in the Queen Zenobia in the Mediterranean Sea where they were supposed to be, but it turns out was kind of more of a setup. After being knocked out, you wake up and found that Veltro, which was thought to be finished after the original attack on Terra Grigia, has resurfaced and is planning on infecting the world's water with a new string of the virus, as a T-virus called the T-Abyss. It turns out Chris and Jessica are sent out on a wild goose chase, and the same way Jill and Parker are sent to look for them, they are looking for Jill and Parker, and they both being sent to opposite places. 80% of the story revolves around Jill and Parker, who are on the ship, and that's really the meat and potatoes of the game. The main story is about survival on board of the ship, which leads to that good old classical Resident Evil feel. You will pick up pieces of the story also playing as Chris and Jessica, as they uncover more of why they were led around in the wrong place looking for Jill and Parker, and finding out why Jill and Parker were led to a cruise ship, as well as playing as Quint and Keith, who are new to the RE universe, but those two basically recover a lot of data that kind of puts more of the pieces of the puzzle together, and why Veltro has reappeared, and what their ultimate plan is. You flip-flop between teams and backstories and characters, which puts the story together, and it seems to get a little confusing, but for the most part, it's a Resident Evil story, and it wasn't bad. I don't want to give anything away, so what you have come to expect from RE game, it's still true here, with plenty of mystery, intrigue, and over-the-top villains, and of course, espionage and backstabbing. I enjoyed it for the most part. I wasn't on the edge of my seat dying to know what's going to happen next, but it held my interest, and it was mysterious enough to lead me to kind of want to know what's going to happen next. The pace of the story does a great job at revealing, little by little, what is actually going on here, and when you dig down the rabbit hole a little more, it seems to get a little bit more interesting. So as far as the story goes, it's a really solid entry in the RA universe. Like I said, this game was a 3DS game first and foremost, so it's basically been blown up to make it work for the consoles. So with that being said, it still looks pretty good, but not great. No issues so far are slowdown or bugs to report, but I do feel the atmosphere is the star of the show here. The cruise ship gives a genuinely creepy vibe, and with you being stuck in the middle of the sea, also gives you a feel of being trapped, and also the fact of not knowing what's going on gives it a really good feel of mystery. And in my opinion, that's what the RE franchise does best, that is, when they're doing it. Jill and Parker's section of the games were fantastic, as being on the cruise ship it was such a feel of nostalgia. As the cruise ship is pretty big and running around getting keys, backtracking and running into creatures, they need to make a decision whether to waste ammo on or just run around them and conserve ammo just like the good old days. And there were some very creepy moments, like this. This is the Queen Zenobia. Emergency call number. And this. Jill, 
What's wrong? I found the target, but she's a zombie. Isn't that always the case? Which I thought was awesome. When playing as Chris's side of the story, or Quentin Keith, or a flashback, this is where the game feels more of the newer Resident Evil games, like 4, 5, and... Ugh, 6. I did think it was kind of great to switch up, as it gives you a break from the stress of having to save ammo and conserving it, to have some fun and just shoot up creatures. The acting is, well, you know the drill of RE, and if you don't, well, take a look. The, uh, Genesis, uh, something. Is that its name? You didn't bother to read the manual, did you? No, uh, I brought it with me, just in case. I hope you read quickly, because you're going to need it on your mission. <laughs> yeah, I'm on it. <laughs> wow, that sounds like a job for us, don't it, Grinder? Wait, we haven't received authorization yet. It's all right. We're on it, OK? Besides, if you need someone to sniff something out, ain't no one better than my boy here. Right here, yeah, at this point, the acting is a staple of the series, and honestly, I don't think I'd really want it any other way. The stupid one-liners and ridiculous banner back and forth it has a certain charm to it, if you ask me. So RE Revelations steals a page out of Alawake and ends every episode with a... Previously on Resident Evil Revelations. And yeah, I thought it was completely pointless, as when Alan Wake did it, I don't know, it just seemed to work there. And here, it seemed like tacked on and just pointless. And more so because some chapters literally are like less than 8 to 10 minutes. So, I would be drawn to a... Previously on Resident Evil Revelations. To recap a story that basically just recapped itself 10 minutes ago. I guess they thought the story would be too confusing to newcomers of the RE universe, and well, I guess if you look at it that way, it does kind of make sense. I just kind of wish there was a way to turn it off and or skip through it, as I just started watching them just because it was there. Resident Evil Revelations is a third-person shooter slash survival horror game. The controls here are very similar to those of the newer Resident Evil games with that over-the-shoulder camera angle, with very limited movement which is popularized in the RE4 and outwards. The turnaround, aiming, and getting around is a pain sometimes and can lead to very frustrating moments, as when you aim, you are confined to a slow walk. But the awkward controls and aiming also lead to very tense fights and encounters that actually make you time your shots and get the most out of your ammo, as it is usually laying around for the most part, but if you make too many bad decisions, you can be very low and flat out just run out. And honestly, I think that's part of the fun. I love RE games, so I'm used to it, but if you are jumping in here new, the controls do take a bit of getting used to. You collect an arsenal that's familiar to the RE universe in which you get handguns, shotguns, assault rifles, sniper, the magnum, and of course the rocket launcher along with a few others. As you will need all of them, you can hold up to three at any given time. There are also grenades that come in many ways, shapes, and forms, and of course the green herb makes a return. On the Wii U, it's all displayed on the gamepad, which is really cool and you can change your weapons and select grenades and use your green herb to heal yourself as well. It also gives you a map so you don't get turned around so much. It gives you kind of a general idea where you were going, and this came in handy more times than not. You can actually select these by actually pressing on the gamepad, but you can also just use the buttons on the controller, which I did 90% of the time, if you prefer. Speaking of the gamepad, there are a few mini puzzles that also use the gamepad where you have to maneuver these little dots to untangle wires, but it's pretty simple stuff. There are boxes around the world that keep up with your guns that you find around, and here you can switch them out, level them up with parts you find around the game. You can get more damage, ammo clip, reload speed, etc, etc. If you're out and about and happen to find a new gun when you're already carrying three, it's nice enough to let you pick it up with the new gun and add it to the gun that you've already had selected. The gun that you had selected ends up going back to your box. The enemies here are varied and challenging at some points, from slow moving targets that take a few handgun bullets to put them down, to fast moving and armored targets that take a good bit of firepower to turn them into a puddle of goo. There are times where you need to pick and choose who and what you're going to kill, as your ammo can run out, and if that does happen, yeah, I assure you, it's pretty much over at that point. There were very few times I actually ran super low to getting out of ammo, and those times I thought, man, it's all over, but luckily I stumbled upon some. Some creatures can be challenging the fact that the controls make it hard to see everything around you, and the enemies team up very fast and pop out of nowhere, which leads to very tense fights. Knowing when to fight and run is crucial to your survival. Something that RE Revelations does that I also thought was pretty cool added what you call a Genesis Scanner. 
Basically, you can scan enemies when they're alive or after they've been dispatched and they turn into a puddle of goo. And if you fill it up to 100%, it will give you an extra green herb. Also, you can scan for hidden items like ammo, health, etc, etc. This is pretty crucial as I found a lot of ammo and health this way and I don't think I would have made it without it. I will say there were some points where I was getting tired of having to whip it out and scan every time I killed something or enter a room and try to scan to find something, but I grew accustomed to it after a while and was actually pretty pleased to find ammo and health when I did. Boss fights are usually over the top with some big huge monster and some can prevent a challenge. The last boss here was such a pain and it was really due to the controls. But in typical RE fashion, the boss fights do not disappoint. They're over the top, creative, and fun. Resident Evil Revelations also offers a raid mode similar to the RE Ops and other Resident Evil games starting kind of around the Resident Evil 4 era. Here it's more of getting to a point A to point E rather than just surviving the time limit like the other ones and here I think it's pretty cool. I spent quite a few hours inside of it and it was really fun. Here it's about leveling up and each level is ripped straight out of the game. It's a small section in which you need to make it through to the end or end up killing all enemies to finish. Honestly, this could be a game all in itself as there are 20 levels and you level up from killing enemies and completed stages. You can beat a level higher, maybe two from what your current level is, but I wouldn't advise going higher to that because it actually does get really difficult and you actually need to be close to the level that you're trying to beat. This definitely adds a lot of extra gameplay hours as I didn't feel it was tacked on at all. It was actually a damn fun time. So I'm going to say that Resident Evil Revelations is probably the best RE entry since Resident Evil 4. Yeah, I'm really confident in saying that. RE5 was great. I did not hate it in the slightest, but I will say that I think this one was a little better. I really enjoyed RE Revelations, and I thought it was a perfect mixture of action and survival horror. Great story pacing with an interesting new tale, and I really dug it. The game's campaign is somewhere around 9 to maybe 11 hours on the normal mode, but with a raid mode, it can easily double that in like 20. If a fan of RE and you haven't made it to this one yet, I would most definitely pick it up. It's somewhere around 20 bucks nowadays, but I think the 3DS version is like maybe 30. If I could turn back time, I would have liked to play this one 3DS. So if you do have the option, I would say go that way. But if not, the Wii U works great too. If you haven't played any of the RE games, yeah, this is good. It's a good combination of what made the franchise what it is today, as well as the direction it seems to be going, or was anyway. So if you were ever interested in what Resident Evil was and was all about, give this a go. Any fan of survival horror, action zombies, etc, etc will like this one, as well as any fan of Resident Evil. So this is Kamikaze Soundwaves, as always, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the review, and we'll see you next time.